Hey, hello everybody, it's Dr. Steve. Welcome back to another episode of Core Wellness TV. Got a little ice melt-off happening here at Charlestown Park, doing a little earthing. I wanted to give you a three pillars episode of Core Wellness TV, mindset, movement, and nutrition. The mindset piece is, I, a couple of days ago I sent out an email about uh, tapping and emotional freedom technique and the tapping summit that's going on right now that Nick Ortner and his group and his family is doing and I really believe in this stuff and here's why. I've got a lot of unsubscribes from putting this out there but hey this is what I believe and what I believe is that there is no separation between the mind and the body. If you've got emotions and crazy stuff that's going on in your brain it's going to affect the way you hold yourself. So you have to clear that stuff out and tapping is a great way to do that and I want you to, to take a look at that and go there and explore it. Don't just immediately shove it off to the side as woo woo, all right? Because here's what the deal is. Uh, one thing is, it brings up, it makes your conscious emotions, it, bring, it allows you to at least take a look at them. Most of us go on and bury this stuff and we just carry around this huge bag of stuff behind us because we never look at it and release it. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a way to, it's an opportunity to bring up emotional baggage and release it right and it can help with cravings it can help with emotional baggage it can help with pain it can help with all kinds of stuff so take a look at that basically what it has to do with acupuncture points you tap acupuncture points while you state uh, you bring up an emotion like uh, even though I'm really 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 crazy angry and, and I can't stand it and I have all these cravings I don't know what to do with myself I still deeply and completely love and accept myself right so basically you're bringing up an emotion you're creating a routine and you're telling yourself that you love yourself you're creating self-love and you're releasing bad emotions what can go wrong with that just give it a try all right that's down below you'll see a link for that second piece movement um, uh, a, a webinar by Mike Reinhold uh, last month uh, brought re brought my attention to the importance of the deep core stability system and especially the muscles around the hip. A lot of us think about our muscles around the hip being these the, the strong glute muscles and the glute medius and the glute minimus and the glute maximus and the psoas and all these muscles around the hip. But those are the big muscles. Those little muscles on the inside that act as kind of like um, uh, they're, they're receptors. They're telling your brain where you are in space. right? But it's kind of like the rotator cuff you have rotator cuff in your shoulder, these small muscles in your shoulder that keep your ball and socket in the right place. You also have muscles around your hip that do the same thing. The gemelli, the uh, uh, obturator, internus, and externus, all these deep, deep muscles. But a lot of us don't have any idea of how to use that because we automatically, whenever we train our hips, we'll go in and automatically do a strong boom, glute squeeze, right? We'll do a, we'll do this, rocks are slick. We'll do a, Boom, we'll do a glute squeeze and we never get in tune and in have the intention of using those smaller muscles so here's a trick to turn those on here's a way to train them okay I call them the intentional muscles because whoa, the intentional muscles because they're the small muscles that come on at the thought of doing something and the thought of pushing away from your support points which you've heard me say before here's a great way to do it think of your the base of your heel the base of your big toe, the base of your little toe as your three points of support and you're going to find those support points you're going to have the intention of pushing away from them and here's what I want you to do if you need balance to, if you don't have good balance you can balance on something but you can go ahead and squeeze your butt muscle okay, and get that feeling and then I want you to let your big glute muscle go but then keep that intention of pushing away and being tall and pushing away from the three pillars of your feet. What that ha what happens is those muscles, those deep muscles, kind of create like a hammock. And whenever you push away, it kind of creates a a space, a small space in your hip joint. A lot of people who have get hip replacements and have hip trouble is because they don't have enough space in their ball and socket joint in their hip anymore. And whenever you push away, it makes space like that. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to squeeze glute and then let the glute go to keep the intention of pushing away. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to simply turn inward and outward, but mostly outward. We want to really work on the out external rotators because that, those are the most important ones. But we're going to use both. We're going to nice and slow. And if you, like I said, if you need some some help, use a put your finger on a chair or something else. But it's not you're not moving this. It's 
this ball, this femur, my leg joint is here, my pelvis is here, my femur is staying solid, and the only thing is moving is my pelvis on top of that, okay? It's like you've got headlights, and you're going to turn your headlights this way. But do that without feeling your butt muscles squeak. That's how you wake up those deep, deep muscles, and then your, your, your hips are going to talk to your brain better, you're going to make more space in your hip, and it's going to, could possibly be the key link for releasing hip joint pain for you. Okay, so that's the movement piece. The nutrition piece is, I got an email today from someone who's getting ready to get a tooth extracted and she's had some heart problems in the past and they want her to take some antibiotics a week before and a week after she gets it done. We said, what should I do? What should I take? Here's the deal. Here's my take on it. Um, Saccharomyces boulardii, right? You can look it up and I'll put a link to it below, but that's one I like to use during antibiotic use. It doesn't colonize and take up residence in your 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 bowels but it does as it goes through it protects you from getting um, the clostridium difficile which is the, uh, the the bad diarrhea that happens it prevents yeast to build up and all that kind of stuff so you take that during and then afterwards what I like to do is recolonize with some acidophilus and bifidus and things like that um, what I use is either the I use metagenics for a lot of my stuff uh, I use the metagenic spectrum which has a lot of different things in it including the saccharomyces boulardii uh, or you can use the acute care if you have a really bad time with diarrhea when you have to take antibiotics, use the acute care. Um, and then afterwards, I usually recommend the Ultraflora Balance. Okay, This is the one that has uh, a lot of different kinds in it. You can also use the Spectrum. I go back and forth between either one. So anyway, those are some things to use. And in addition, during that period of time, you want to eat, be eating fermented foods like sauerkraut kimchi, um, kombucha tea, things like that. Um, look online for some fer fermented, uh, and I recommend raw fermented vegetables, just because, you know, when you pasteurize something, you kill off a lot of bugs. So if you want the benefit of the bacteria, don't pasteurize it, don't boil it, right? So uh, that's it, Mindset, Movement, and Nutrition, guys. If you have any questions about that, please leave a comment down below, and get outside, and Get your feet on the ground. I know it's spring's coming. It's right around the corner, I promise. All right. Hey, have a great day, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Another thing I forgot to tell you about the importance of turning on those small muscles next to your joints, close to your joints, is that you notice this is very slick, and I'm having to use very conscious steps as I step here but the thing is is I've got constant feedback going on between my brain and the small muscles of my hip and the small muscles of my feet and the small muscles of my spine because I train them I train them with balance I train myself to react quickly okay and the thing is is whenever you take a step if you don't have those small muscles awake and engaged and alive and mobile right you got to be able to move through your hip joints. You got to be able to move through your hip joints. You have to train them for stability. And then, what do you prevent? Whoosh, bam! Broken hips. Whoosh, bam! You're out for the season, right? Whatever. You prevent injury. And you flood your body with positive afferents, good afferents, good input. Garbage in, garbage out. Computer analogy, same thing for your body. You get good information, lots of information coming in. Afferents blocks pain. This was this would be a very uh, this is a great uh, actual treatment for low back pain or any kind of pain because I'm flooding my body with afferents. Like um, I, I hit my elbow earlier on a on a door frame as I walked through it, and immediately I rubbed it. Why did I do that? I provided mechanical activity. It's called mechanoreception. Mechanoreceptors. You have all kinds of mechanoreceptors in your body, and if you can train them and flood your body with good positive input from these mechanoreceptors, then you have better balance. You're a better, you're a better, uh, basically, receiver of the universe, right? And that's what this is all about, is being able to bring in as much of the universe as possible and make you a better taster, a livelier taster of the universe. That's what Thomas Myers called it at one point. I read one of his articles. A livelier taster of the universe. And if you don't have good mobility and stability and the ability to do this kind of stuff, right, you don't get to taste the universe as well as you could. So that's why you use your small muscles of your hip, right? <laughs>
Bye-bye.